today. Uh, I... Zora, I'm glad you're in the class. Ah, my beautiful daughter. Uh, do you enjoy the, the college so far? Yes, Father, I do. Oh, good. Now, I know I assigned you some uh, homework, some research on Rembrandt. Your favorite painting? Yes. Did you do your assignment, Zora? Yes, I researched him. Oh, good. Uh, let me uh, ask you, um, what did you find? What are some interesting facts about Rembrandt? What stood out to you? Well, Rembrandt came from a um, wealthy family. His father was a miller. His mother was from a baker's family. Had up to ten siblings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think the fact that he was wealthy had any bearing on the fact that he became such a renowned painter? Not necessarily, no. Oh. Now, he went to college. He opened up his own studio, and I believe it was Prince Hendrick bought paintings up until 1646 of his. Interesting. So even while alive, he was renowned. Right. He was, he was classified as the master of self-portraits. The master of self-portraits. Mm -hmm. Did you find a painting that stood out to you? Uh, I did, and I actually have a uh, picture of it right here. Susanna and the Elders, 1647, oil on canvas. Yes. Ah, beautiful. It has a remarkable way of speaking to you. And I did find out, too, that he also used subjects that lived around him to pose for those paintings. Did he? Yes. Oh. They were not models. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, I, for one, adore him. And I have to ask you, did you question anything about the painting while you were studying them? Do you believe they deserve to be in such high renown among the world? Do you believe they deserve that spot? I believe they should, yes. Yes. He's a renounced painter. Yes. Class, I want you to always question why. To enjoy these paintings. Do not let society, do not let the world influence you on your creative endeavors and your creative likes and dislikes. You must always question things. Remember the tomatoes, Aura. I'll speak to you later. Thanks for doing your homework. Thank you, Father, for asking questions. Victoria. Hello. Good to see you. It's been a pleasure having you on campus. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed classes. myself thoroughly. Oh, good. So, um, I'd like to touch on a subject that we discussed the other evening, and that is the tomato. What does the tomato mean to you? Well, that's a good question. Um, the, the tomato can mean a plethora of different things. It can mean... Um, history, or art, or beauty, or anything that anyone is interested in, or finds some kind of significance in. Ah, that's a very interesting viewpoint. Tell me, do you believe society has had any bearing on your views of the tomato? Well, I think so, yes. Um, the society and um, social norms of today oh. have um, quite influenced me in, in, a, in a big way. I think that um, it influences your daily, daily life and your daily choices, of course. Um, and so, of course, that's going to make an impact on, on the tomato, if you will. Yes. Now, I know that some students have talked about how they dislike other classes, the history of the tomato, 1700 to 1900, or what makes the tomato the tomato. But I, as you mentioned, want you to question why you like the tomato. What sort of societal, and like you said, social norms have influenced your view of the tomato? 
and the social norms you speak of. Please elaborate. Well, just in this century, what's, what's normal and what's um, appropriate for today and what's, um, what your attitude should be towards certain things and certain art and things in history and things that have happened hundred years of hundred years ago to ten years ago to today. It just depends on um, I think the way you are raised and the way that um, your everyday life goes. I think um, everyday um, conversations that you have with other people, other insights that you give, other cultural influences and other social uh, cultures, I guess, if you will. Um, that I guess that could influence the way you think about the tomato or um, the way that you view anything. Really. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. I say, you are a very intelligent student and I enjoy having you in my classes and I will take my leave now. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Some call me a prophet. I walk the streets of Boston, though I'm scoffed at. You look in my face, you see a man to be feared, but I'm on a mission from the greats to spread music to your ears. According to Franklin at Southern University, the largest public black college in the United States throughout the 1960s, certain patterns of students' protests emerged in 1960 and persisted through throughout the decades. When the student protesters were expelled from the university, rallies were held on campus and classes were boycotted. In every instance, the university administration cooperated with the police and sought to prevent students, activists, from returning to campus. Got the sun on my leg and I walk in the light. I'm a aquatic beast and when I reach the surface, I'll have rights. The right to be heard and the right to peaceful protest. The peaceful protest. The protest the system, they ain't room for second best. Hey. According to Meisenhelder, Kors saw that the relations of production can not be understood apart from their cultural, political, and ideological aspects and connections. Ideology should be seen as a material force in society and consciousness as a part of being. I said, don't be alarmed that the movement taking place, but if you're alarmed, you're the problem. Get out of the race. The youth are aware the socionomical chokehold the wealthy, privileged, and the powerful have like a stronghold. We'll break down these walls and build a garden all can feast on. Not just the powerful, but the poor, the hated, and, and the stepped on. Well, I might not change the world, you can call me Carl Weathers. Because I run through the jungle and I hunt down the predators. Yeah. What is beauty? If you have any sense, you're thinking you're a girl. But if you're searching for it, the answer's elusive like a pearl. When you find the truth, when you find the truth within yourself, and when you master the art of searching, you'll master the art itself. Weinstein stated, how we see others determines our treatment of, of the others and often, but not always, shapes how others ultimately behaves. The meditating mechanism of its effort operates through reinforcement, the availability or lack thereof of opportunities, the message about capability, worth, and in conclusion that impacts individuals' self-view engagements and survival. Well, double down on making a change. Turn a, read a book, turn the page. Better yet, write a page yourself. We'll make it fresh, shake it up, and put the old ideas on a shelf. 
Thank you, everybody.